Good morning, good morning. Yes, it is 5.30 a.m. Welcome once again to another day with God's city, my city, 40 days of prayer and sharing. We're right back here again by the grace of God. He is good. No, I'm sorry. I told you that sister said chicken is good. God is great. So I'm on, I'm, I feel that to this morning. We're glad to be here once again. Praise God for all of you coming on. You're right there. You're locked and loaded. You're lit and you're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and begin because I'm going to share with you some things the text talks about and the context. Good morning, everyone. I see you shouting out. I want to say good morning. Let's get into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're here one more time. You woke us up this morning, and as they say, you started us on our way. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the grace, for the mercy of God. Now be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I've got to admit, I'm excited today about this one because I believe this right here is a game changer. This one right here today, if we can get this right, wow, we can revolutionize our experience and everybody around us. We talk about it. We hear things about it. But now today, we're going to be about it. All right, team? We're going to be about it. My brothers and my sisters, we're going to be about this one. The other ones were great, but this one right here is where the rubber meets the road. Day six, we're talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about whatever. Forgiveness. That's right. Forgiveness. That's a huge one. Now, let me just say this, the preference, what we're about to go into. Everybody going to have situations and problems. No relationship is problem free. But the ability, now this is key right here. Today is so key. The ability to forgive is where the strength of the relationship will lie. Because we always, I, I mean, I can guarantee you, there are going to be times, not with the same person, where sometimes somebody going to offend you and you're going to offend someone else. You're either going to need to give forgiveness or you're going to need to be forgiven. So today, I'm telling you, the day, the day is a game changer because we all find ourselves in what is called relationships. Now, let me just give you this. This is key. key. Relationships is like a living organism. A living organism breathe, it moves. A living organism creates waste and toxicity or toxic. And what happens is, like for instance, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. I'm taking in oxygen, I'm expelling waste. When you eat food, you go to the bathroom, you expel waste. Your car takes in gasoline and it has a carbon, it, it, it releases waste. Let me just say this, everything has the ability to get waste from it, continues to live. Relationships are like that. You know why some relationships die? They become too toxic. They lose the ability to get waste from them. What do you mean? Bitterness is like waste. When something happens to you and something happens to me, it hurts me, it wounds me, and I become like, it, 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 it affects me. Now, if I keep letting it pile up and I don't have a way of getting stuff away from me, expelling it, getting it dissipated, moving it out of my life, then eventually it becomes so toxic the relationship dies on its toxicity. Forgiveness is that exhaust system that gets bitterness from your relationship that allows us to continue to live in community. That's why this today is so powerful. Listen to what the Bible says. Colossians chapter 3, 12 through 13. Colossians 3, 12 through 13. Now, I'm going to pause here because when I read it, I want to say something. Notice what it said. Colossians 3. 12 through 13, it says, in fact, let me go to it. Therefore, oh, 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 there's a sign. We got to pause. Therefore, therefore, therefore. As you've heard me before, there's a conjunction. Therefore is therefore a reason. Now, when you read Colossians chapter 3, you will discover when it says, therefore, you got to go back. This is your homework and read verses 1 through 11 because by the time you get to verse 12 it's going to put out a therefore and a therefore 
is therefore, <laughs> I don't mean to be funny, but therefore is therefore for a reason. And when you read verses 1 of Colossians 3, I'm going to read just a little bit of it before we get into it. Because I told you, today is a game changer. If we can get this one right, we can revolutionize our church and have a revival of true godliness. And we can go to the next level because I believe the biggest problem and the holdup is us. We are holding on to stuff and we don't know how to get toxicity from our relationships. Therefore, I believe we are holding up the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the disciples got into the upper room, they were able to forgive one another. They were able to accept and love one another. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came in copious showers where the people of God became so endowed with the Holy Ghost, they turned the world upside down. And I believe God is waiting for a people who will get into a room and come together and say to one another, I am sincerely sorry for hurting you. And then we can say to each other, you are forgiven by the grace of God. You know, that's what this thing is all about. We got to live in relationship. We need to live in community. We need to let one another know we love each other. And by doing that, I promise you, there's going to be a revival in the lives of God's people. Notice what it says in verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ. Now watch this. If then. Verse 1. That's why I want to go back to this. Because we got a little time. We've got to spend a little moment on this today. If then you were raised with Christ. That suggests when we were baptized or when we were converted. We were raised up with Christ. We went down into the watery grave. We were converted. We were born again. And the text suggests, Paul says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your mind on the things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So we die. We die. We die. We die. We die and our life is hidden in God. I want you to get that. We die. Now if you are dead, you are dead. I've got to drop down because I don't have time to read the rest of it. For you die. I got to say that again. You die. You were raised with Christ. And the Bible says, <laughs> oh, I feel like preaching. You died. And then I'm going to ask myself, if you're not able to forgive people, did you really die? Wow, that's what I'm saying. Today is a game changer. Yo. It woke me up. When I'm reading this thing now, I'm saying, Lord, have mercy. Are we perpetrating? Do we have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof? People don't leave our church because <laughs> doctrines of God. They leave because broken relationships. We don't know how to get alone. And that's my concern. It's not so much... You offend me, that makes it a problem. It's just that I need to forgive you if you offend me. And you need to forgive me if I offend you and stop holding grudges and stop being bitter. That's what's wrong with our marriages. We can't get over the toxicity. My wife and I, we love each other. We have issues. I'm telling you, we love each other. However, we still have issues, but we don't let toxicity consume our relationship. She says, I forgive you. And she forgive me and we move on and we don't hold it against each other. And that's what that, that, that's the epitome of being able to live in community. That's, that's why I said today is a game changer. If, if I can't forgive you, then I got to ask a question. Did you really die or are you still alive? Is your flesh still kicking or were you a buried alive and got up out the watery grave still letting the flesh dominate your life? You cannot not tell your story. If you love God, and the Bible says, if then you were raised with Christ, then seek those things that are above. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things not on earth. And then it says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. 
Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, which is fornication and uncleanness and passion, evil desires, because these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them, which you yourself once now that's what at least God gives us the benefit of doubt. He says, since you died with Christ, you used to walk like this. You don't walk like that any longer. Now you walk like this. But now you yourselves are to put all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his desires. Now verse 10, and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge. You put on the new man and you are now renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created you or created him where there is neither now there's no Greek, nor Jew, nor circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, slave, free, Scythian, Scythian, but Christ is all in all. See, we're going to be united. You know, it's not a brown skin or white skin. It's a, it's a one skin. We are united in Christ. And if you're a real leader, you don't divide people. If you're a real leader, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But you become a minister of reconciliation. You want to bring relationships back together. And that's what we should do as a committee of one, as the people of God. We need to work on becoming a committee of one. And like I said yesterday or the other day, we become dispensers of mercy. Now we want to become walking, living, moving machines of forgiveness. Now we're going to talk about it because see, after you read verses 1 through 11, because you died in Christ, you were raised with him, you put to death that old man, therefore... See, there it is right there. Therefore, since all of that happened, therefore, Paul says, since that is a reality in your life and that literally happened, therefore. Now, now, here we go. Because that happened, therefore. Now, you can't do this if verse 1 through 11 didn't happen in your life. Now, notice what the text says. Verse 12. 12 is possible for us today because verse 11 Verse 1 through 11 happened in our experience. We died with Christ. Let's die. In other words, we don't need to work on trying to perform. We need to work on dying. Die. That's it. Die. We're trying, to, we're trying to beat the flesh into obedience and submission. The flesh needs to die. That's it. The flesh got to die. And if the flesh is dead, Paul says this now. Therefore, as God's chosen people, you're chosen. We're chosen. We're holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Bear with each other. And forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's it. It's it. We can just drop the mic. Forgive as God has forgiven you. Measuring out forgiveness. How many times shall I forgive somebody? He did this so many times. He hurt my feelings. He gets on my nerve. That happened again. How many times has God forgiven you? Or oh, let me just get right down to it. How many times has God forgiven our no good, raunchy behinds time after time? We jack up on God. We mess up on God. And we talk. And then God forgives us. We beg for mercy and grace. And God forgives us. And all the Lord wants us to do now is become forgiving machines. That's it. So what you got hurt? Get out your emotions. You ain't the only one that been hurt. In fact, there were apostles and disciples and people of God in the first century who became martyrs, died, burned at the stake, and they were forgiving people. They were loving people who were literally stoning them. Stephen was stoned. I mean, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
Now, come on, people of God. This is what we got to do. That's why the text says, therefore, and I'm going to read it one more time. Therefore, as God's chosen people, don't make any mistake about it. We're chosen. Now, because we're chosen doesn't make us a ditty, stuck up, exclusive. We all that. No, it just means God needs somebody to represent him, and he put his hand on your life. You got this truth not to be, you, you know, knowledgeable. We got this truth because God wanted chosen people that he can use to let the world know this, it, it, this is what it looks like when you come in contact with me. That's what your life should say. When somebody look at your life, they should say, oh, wow, okay, I see. This is what it looks like when a fallen human being who's born in sin run into the almighty God of the universe and their life is transformed. This is what it looks like when you walk into God's space. Therefore, you're chosen, you're holy, you're dearly loved, you're holy, which means you don't get holy because you perform through time, your behavior. No, you're holy now. When God put his hand on your life, you're holy now. You don't get more holy. Let me just say it this way. Sanctification is a process. Justification is instantaneous. Justification is God declaring on you right now, you're righteous and you're holy. That's God's work. He says, you do your, I've forgiven you. And as far as I'm concerned, you are holy. Sanctification now is not working to become more holier. Wow. <laughs> Whole sanctification now is undoing the work of sin in our lives, is reversing the process now, undoing it so I can live free, even though when Christ said you're justified, you weren't free yet. So justification is God calling you something that you're not, and sanctification is actually becoming what God called you, holy. That's right. It's a process. Becoming holy. I'm spending some time on that today because you cannot give what you don't have. That's key. You, don't, you can't give it. A machine can't give what it doesn't have. If I get into a little Pinto or a little Volkswagen and put it on the Autobahn in Germany trying to keep up with those Porsche, those Benz, those cars that are maxed out with speed, it won't do it. If as human beings, if I'm not converted, and if I have experienced Jesus for myself, I can't get what I don't have. So you gotta ask yourself, when you run into people who say they're Christians, and they can't love and they can't forgive, then I gotta ask myself, are you really what you say you are? Because if you are, Paul says, therefore, because you're holy, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness. Some folks just mean, good night, Christians have no right to be mean. Humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Bear with each other. Let's give each other the benefit of doubt. Stop being so hard and critical of somebody. You know, you, you know you need mercy. You know you need grace. You need forgiveness. I'm just saying, we all need it. I need it. As a pastor, I need it. If I offend you, please tell me. And I'll get on my knees and I'll tell you, I'm sorry. I remember I was leaving a district. I mean, there's no lie, I was leaving a district and the young lady was um, just irate with me for whatever reason. And the new pastor that was um, coming in, I was telling them that whatever the person was saying about the new pastor wasn't true. And we were in their house. I mean, literally we were in the house and I got on my knees at a member's house and told this member, I am so sorry for the offense that you think I committed. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be forgiven for stuff I didn't even do. I mean, that's how deep this thing was. And I'm literally, I'm, I'm literally on my knees because it's not too, it's the, nothing is too big for me that I can't do for God. Bottom line. If I offend you, I'm not going to be so big and so bad that I can't say I'm sorry. I know I'm going to offend you. Why? Because I'm fallen. I'm sinful. I'm, I'm, I'm human. I'm a mortal. I'm finite. I will offend you. Why? Because it's in me. It's, I'm, it's capable of happening. But if you tell me, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I'm sorry. 
And that's what happens. That's why when people get offended, let me just throw this in there as a nugget. That's why if whenever you get offended, don't try to live with it. It didn't bother me. And you know it did. Tell the person. Use an iMessage. message. I was offended by that. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm sorry. And you know what you give that person the opportunity to do? You give that, opportun- you give that person the opportunity to exercise God's mercy and grace in a life of a person. When you say to me, you hurt me, and then I can show you how big God is in me by saying, I forgive you, or I'm sorry. That's it. We do this right, saints. I'm telling you, it'll revolutionize the church. If we all become a committee of one and begin to exercise this one thing here, I promise you, there'll be a revival second to none. Let me move on. That's believe it. Now, I spent a little time today on believe it because I really got a burden on this because relationships are key. At the end of the day, you don't just want to have something to stand for. You want to have somebody you can stand with. That's effective communication at its best. When I share with you how I feel, you share with me how you feel, and then by the time we finish, even if we don't see eye to eye, if I can stand, I can stand for something and still stand with somebody, I have effectively communicated my, my concern. Notice here, we can learn three things from today's text. Now we're going to live it. We believe it. Now let's live it. We can learn three things from today's text. Number one, forgiving is a decision. Forgiving is a decision. You got that? Forgiving is a decision. Forgiveness is not a feeling. If you wait, if you wait to feel like forgiving, you probably will never do it. First, you must forgive with your mind then with your heart. This does not mean it will be easy, especially if you have been deeply wounded. Forgiveness doesn't depend on whether or not the other person deserves it. Decide to forgive today. See, when you forgive somebody, it doesn't doesn't matter whether or not do they deserve it, they don't deserve it. No, we don't deserve it. The text says, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. You think you deserve it? You think I deserve it? No. So forgiving is a decision, number one. Number two, you must treat the person who has hurt you as if he or she is forgiven. Praise God. You know, I'm so glad God treats me like that. He treats me like I never offended him. And you know, when he went to the cross and took those cat, that cat of nine tails, that whip that beat him with bones and chip that tore out muscle, that pulled off skin, then put a crown of thorns and then they put a spear in his side and they put nails through his ankles and his wrists. You you know, when they did that to him, that crushed him, that hurt him, but then he's forgiven me as though I did not do that to him because the reality is it wasn't the Roman soldiers that nailed him to the cross. It wasn't Pilate's verdict. No, it was your sins and my sins that nailed my God to the cross. That's why I'm humbled every day when I wake up. I think about the mercy and grace of God, how he loved me in spite of myself. He was willing to be so inconvenient that he left glory, came to a sin-cursed world, lived in my shoes, walked in my steps, died a cruel death, And then he's forgiven me of all my sins as though I have never sinned against him, as though I never hurt him. Man, that's awesome. That's why the book Love Like You've Never Been Hurt is so powerful because that's how we should love. You've got to learn to love. we got to learn to love like we've never been hurt. If somebody hurt you, number one, forgiving forgiving is a decision. you got to forgive. It's a decision. Number two, You must treat the person who has hurt you as if he or she is forgiven. Notice, you may have asked yourself, how does a person forgive? The answer is simple. Treat the other person as if you have forgiven him or her. Acts that reflect forgiveness can eventually produce feelings of forgiveness. Acts. In other words, do something. You may feel strange as you treat with kindness one that has injured you. Don't let it bother you. Those awkward initial feelings will be replaced later by something much more beautiful. So even though you may not feel it, act it and your feelings will come. Number three, 
A forgiven person forgives. I like that. A forgiven person forgives. The main reason we forgive others is that God has forgiven us. Think for a moment how he has treated you. He's patient, praise God. He holds no resentment, praise God. He gives you another chance, hallelujah. You can say that's God, but God is in you. Though his Holy Spirit to help you, through your Holy Spirit to help you, forgive. Call on that power in your life and forgive the one who has offended you. That's right. Now share it. Here we go. Share it. Pray and ask God to show you someone you need to forgive. You know, begin to pray. Ask God, who do I need to forgive? If somebody, if I offended somebody, that's, that's share it. Make a decision to forgive that person and try to connect with them soon. Those are your marching orders. That's the mission. Mission, not mission impossible, but mission possible. The mission today is, if you choose to accept it, is to pray and ask God to show you someone you need to forgive. Make that decision. Make the decision to forgive that person and try, and try to connect with them soon. Your prayer today, our prayer today, our prayer today. Now remember, this is 40 days leading up to the big crusade, the campaign, August the 3rd through the 9th. We want to pray for the person in charge for the music. We want to pray for that person. That's what we want to do today. We want to pray for the person in charge of the music. It's really going to be an awesome blessing. Our hearts are going to be so blessed. And so what we want to do is pray for the music, with the person who's in charge. Pray for their health their family, and for their spiritual life. Pray that God, through their music ministry, can heal, encourage, and bring unity. That's what we want to pray today for, the person in charge of the music. We want to pray for their health. We want to pray for their family and for their spiritual life. We want to pray that God, through their music ministry, can heal, encourage, and bring unity. Now again, we want to remember forgiveness Forgiven, it's a decision. I got to decide today. I can make a decision right now with my own volition. I'm going to forgive. I'm not going to hold grudges. I'm going to let it go. Because guess what? Here we go. Forgive. I want you to spell the word forgive out. You know how to spell it. F-O-R-G-I-V-E. Forgive. Now, if you take it and turn it around, put give in front of four. Spell it that way. Spell it this way. G-I-V-E-F-O-R. Give four. Ha. Forgive. Turn it around. Give four. Now this is bonus what I'm about to share with you. Give four. When someone offends you, the only way they get off the hook is not through their performance, not through their penance. They got to do something great and spectacular. No. Forgiveness is the act of the offended person who's been offended to give for the act that was committed against them. So what does that look like? You hurt me. I understand you hurt me. You say, please forgive me. Now, in order for that person to be forgiven, I have to give for their act by saying, you're off the hook. You're forgiven. God did that on Calvary. To forgive us, he gave for our mess. Don't worry about it. It hurt me. It crushed me. But I'm going to give for it so that you can walk away free. I'm going to give for your offense. Every time you're offended, remember, you got to give for. And when you do that, guess what? You're freeing yourself of toxicity and bitterness so that Christ who raised you, the one who called you to live holy, the one who called you to be clothed in compassion, mercy, and grace, the one who now says forgive as the Lord has forgiven you, you can do it by the power and grace of God. That's why he says, therefore, because something happened in your life, therefore, do this. Because the Holy Ghost is walking with you, therefore. You got it? All right. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you again for your awesome grace, mercy. And today we thank you for, uh, for of your forgiveness. We're forgiven. We're clean. We're righteous. We're holy because you said it. Now be with us as we walk through this day. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. And may we, Lord, have the spirit of forgiveness. May we, Lord, now forgive those who have offended us. We lift up the musicians. We lift up those who are in charge of the music. We lift up the person, their health, their family. We pray for that individual right now, God, that you will bless them in a mighty way as they carry out their responsibility and duties, as they lead out in the area of music. Bless them, I pray. And then we ask that you would be with us. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Have an awesome, incredible day. This is a new beginning. And guess what? When you do that, you'll live the life God intended for you to live. Make the day the best day, the rest of the day, the best day of your life. And I believe by the grace of God, when the day is over, you're going to shout hallelujah. God bless you. Have an awesome day on purpose. Be blessed. And we'll see.